Hi, dude. Hey, Peter. How are you? Doing great, thanks. How are you? You're good. How was your weekend? I think it was great. Uh, it was just busy. <laughs> <laughs> With good stuff, hopefully? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I went to this uh, garden party where three different bands played concerts. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It was good music? Yeah. It wasn't uh, very professional. They were yeah. all just starting out, but I think they just added to it. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, like live shows. Yeah. Hey, John. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Peter. Hey, hey, hey David. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Tracy. How are y'all? Hey, everybody. Doing well. Uh, a week's off to a great start. Good. Uh, so today, probably what we want to cover is some of the stuff that we were researching from last time, talk about the updates to the mentorship programs, and uh, go from there. Sounds good. So first update I'll give you is I did uh, reach out to Niku, and he's on board for joining the mentorship program Great. for the onboarding tasks. And so he's been added to that list of the mentors for that particular submission. So right now we have Peter, myself, and Niku on that one for onboarding. Great. And then Bobby, you want to maybe give an update on the documentation mentorship program? Um, sure. And the task force as well, because uh, I think that's today we're starting with the documentation and then maybe having some of the onboarding, if I have that correct. Sure. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, and I see Nico just down. Uh, hey, hey, Nico. And I want to apologize in advance for, for the dogs barking. I'm fostering a, a, a rescue dog, so I don't know what his behavior oh. will be. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I'm hoping it's good. <laughs> uh, can everybody see my screen? Uh -huh. Yep. Okay, great. So for the documentation task force, we do have um, an application into the mentorship program. I was uh, privileged enough to be able to review um, those over the weekend. And I tried to grab out the ones that I think, and I know David and I had a little chat about this last week, about how we don't want the documentation efforts for the mentees to be something they're spending a whole lot of time focused on when in fact they should be focusing on the coding or whatever they're doing um, rather than sharing it or documenting it. So we thought one of the things that the documentation mentee could do or the documentation task force could do is kind of use the mentee program as a testing ground for what we're building in, in so far as standards and choices and templates. So we want kind of the task force and the mentee to be able to not train the other mentees who have to document their work, but more be able to direct the other mentees where they can choose different documentation styles and templates from. So with that, and I think I covered that right, David. Did I miss anything in our conversation? Oh, you probably had to take care oh. of the dog. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> Bobby. I was looking for the mute, the mute button. Uh, um, no, I think that covers it. Uh, um, yeah, so we don't want to combine all yeah. the documentation mentorship efforts. We want to basically have either our mentee or our task force support their efforts. Yeah, and again, I can't speak for men, but my understanding as we discussed was that just in terms of the way she needs to manage things, it needs to be separate because there's in the system a one-for-one -one matching between a mentee and a project. So if we combine things, then you can only have one mentee for that. And my, you know, we want- yeah multiple people to be involved in multiple documentation efforts but yeah i think it's more on our end to just coordinate be aware of what's happening with the documentation side and then do that coordination and i think again as we discussed i think having these mentees in you know helping out with these projects is the a really great way to kind of 
bring in anything the documentation task force wants to do into those projects like here's templates here's you know whatever it may be right you know and then they'll be the people who take that into the project so it's going to be i think the timing for this task force works well along with the the mentee projects getting started but yeah we we can do some coordination across those projects without combining them on men's end because she needs to manage them as separate efforts right yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's basically why I kind of thought that we would just support them. Um, so for the task force, uh, what I did was I pulled out the most, I mean, just about every one of the submissions when you read them and get down to it, they want the mentee to be able to document their work so other people can benefit from it. So the ones I pulled out were the ones that specifically have in the description or are really focused on what the documentation is. So the, and we don't know if any of these are gonna actually make it in there, but again, this is just an idea of who's asking for documentation in the community. I found it was better than the survey for me, <laughs> finding out just who needed what, you know, like uh, Besu's doing this thing with learning tokens. It's a great educational use case for for acquiring knowledge and getting a token for that. And they want that uh, ERC uh, token bridge and all how you do it and build it all to be well documented for, for type of ledger. Uh, same thing with um, Cactus. They don't like their documentation. They think it's horrible and they don't know what to do about it. So they're looking for help with their, I guess, maybe changing their GitHub into the make the doc. So those templates would be relevant for them. Um, same thing with Bevel, they, they want their whole documentation redone, they don't like what it looks, you know, so there's a lot of synergies between the mentee programs and what we're doing. I'm hoping, because again, these aren't decided yet, I'm kind of hoping that maybe we will have some of these, um, not these, but maybe um, I'm, I'm envisioning maybe a presentation to the mentees who have documentation needs uh, where we have them um, pointed directly to the templates they need. So if they're developing code and they need to get a GitHub repository and to uh, make the docs, what do we suggest they do? Um, and then give that to them and then let them test our templates. If they say that was completely unusable, I had to go with something else, wasn't helpful, or, oh my gosh, that saved my life. You know, that's kind of what the feedback we want from the mentees that we give this presentation and offer the templates to. Um, again, uh, and then the only other thing I think that the task force, you know, other than getting that ready, I mean, I think the steps in getting that ready start with defining your user groups. Because again, these are gonna be more of the maintainers, coders, which is the high, the deep thought, um, templates that have to have uh you know support by the hyperledger uh foundation um you know because they again i i know david could probably speak and tracy could probably speak better to the products that actually are supported i know i, I wrote it down somewhere um i think it's in the mentee application piece um so i guess the tasks we want to really focus on coming up this week would be if anybody wants to take a stab at any of these three user groups, especially with the maintainers, um, I'm calling anyone doing coding right now, that's a general term for maintainers. And I'm just gonna add, because they're not all gonna be maintainers. Um, hopefully get that at least started um, or someone to make suggestions um, so that next week, uh, whoever takes that task on can uh, show us what they came up with and then we'll work on how to present that to the mentees. Um, and again, we have a few other tasks for the, for the uh, task force to complete, but I think that with the mentees just starting, it's a good time to do this one first. What does anybody else think? Thoughts, comments? Yeah, I think those are good uh, personas, Bobby, to focus on. And, you know, on the mentorship program for the documentation, who do you have working on that particular one? Ch 
sound it looks like you're on mute, Bobby. Good, I was stuttering anyway. Uh, um, I'm actually the, the lead on the mentorship documentation uh, um, application. So um, if it gets accepted, uh, the next step would be whoever wants to apply for that. Um, I don't have any one uh, keyed into that yet or any suggestions. I want you know someone who is interested in it to, to apply if that, if that was your question. Yeah, no, I was more on the who's on the mentorship uh, mentor side versus the mentee side. I mean, oh, oh, just me, I think. Hold on. No, there's a couple of us. Um, let me just get there. Where did I put that? Give me a second to find. Yeah, there it is. Uh, is that it? I'll open that in a minute. I'll get there soon. <laughs> um, but the mentorship application, actually, I can just go right here and find it. Just me. Why well, are you going to add your name, John? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to be working on the onboarding task or mentorship, Bobby, Any, so I think I'm going to stick to that. But maybe somebody else who's on the call would want to join that. Uh, well, group. then uh, maybe you could help out with the documentation task force and just uh, go to that page and maybe list um, the templates or whatever you think the onboarding, you know, because it's kind of the same thing. Everything we're going to do for documentation is going to fit in your piece for onboarding. Sure, Bobby. I'm glad to help you out. Just let me know exactly what specifics you want me to focus on and we'll do that. Okay. That would be great. Um, so again, if this gets accepted, we'll have someone helping us with this, a dedicated, uh, person and that can probably run that uh, presentation to the other mentors that need documentation needs and can help us, you know, with organizing this. Because again, uh, once this stuff is done, it has to be easily accessible. So that's the onboarding um, piece to it. Agreed, yeah. yeah. Okay, so hey Bobby, on this on this particular web page that you've got up, um, this GitHub repo under the additional information is that a valid? Or, no, the one below it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. My computer is so slow. This one? Yes, that one. Doesn't seem to be a working link. Okay. We'll just have to figure out where and, that was. And that was the maintainer's one? The one that Dave's been working on? Is that the one you're thinking about? Yeah, yeah. I don't have a link to that one. So if you could drop that in the chat or send it to me later, that would be great. Okay. I will find where that one's at. Yeah, I'm not sure where that link went. Because I know this isn't it. This is just with our information and teammates. Okay, so that's basically it for me today for the um, task force. Oh, right there. I had okay. a, a little yeah. update that was Good, Peter. Uh, just Great. say 
just to say uh, that uh, I'm almost finished with judging uh, the the project proposals that I have to as the part of the committee. So I uh, mean still couldn't produce the end results because she's waiting for me. So I apologize for that, but I'll, I'll definitely finish it today. I started on Friday and there were just too many of them uh, to finish all on Friday, but uh, I'll get there today. Yeah, yeah, no worries. That's great. I'll give men uh, an update and let her know. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks for that update, Peter. And then the other thing I was going to ask you about is on the last call, we had talked about doing a review of the hyperledger.org and you were going to look at the learn and use sides of that. So did you get a chance to look at those two tabs under hyperledger.org? Sure. Sorry, I, I will get that done for our next meeting. I did not get a chance yet. Okay, yeah, no, no problem. I went through Bobby and I did the participate link and I can show that up on the screen if we want to just take a quick look at the documentation there. Overall, I thought things were pretty clean. I'll go through and just show my screen here. Did everyone see that or not? I'll put a link to it. I can chat. see it. You can see it? Okay, great. So I would say, you know, overall it looked like the links were fairly up to date. I will say, uh, you know, there were some things that looked like they were older, but I don't know if that necessarily was impacting things as far as, you know, the quality of the content or the how the up-to-date content is. So like, for example, on the Participate homepage, we had a code of conduct from 2019, but you know, I'm still looking uh, at that and saying that the code of conduct probably hasn't changed since 2019, so that's probably okay. And then I did interact with the chat bot and asked it about uh, current events. And this is just, you know, one of the idiosyncrasies of chat bots is, and it actually pulled up, David, just from one of the old uh, Hyperledger global forums and presented that as, you know, current events. <laughs> oh, that's great, that's great. I, I, you know, I think this is good feedback for Ben. And the, again, I think the timing on here works well. He, uh, um, can't remember if I've covered this in the past on the recent calls, but he is working with um, an agency to redesign the website to make it fit the new brand. And he's looking at on a page level, you know, do we need to update the content? So this is perfect for us to be going through and kind of thinking through, you know, what, what recommendations we have. So we could always invite him to one of these calls if we do have a set of recommendations or, or I can, if he shares kind of what he's thinking, I haven't seen yet exactly what he's thinking yet, but I can share those back too. But this is great that we're putting kind of this review in place. Yeah. I, I will, sorry, I didn't ahead. mean to cut you off. I'll just share what he shared with me. He did say his kind of general view on the website based on the data he's looked at is there needs to be much less content on it. Like people just scan, like they spend very little time on the website, they just scan. So his recommendation was to have the website have less content. And then when people find something when they scan and they want to click on, then they can go through like a deeper dive. So like have the website have less content and then have those link off to deeper dives on, on specific things. So that's gonna be his approach. Yeah. And I guess the only thing I'll say to you, David, and you know, we have our team that works on SEO for websites in uh, my company is that if sometimes if you put content too far down in the nesting of the breadcrumb trail, then Google won't 
you know, index that as highly as something that maybe is only two or three levels deep. Okay, that that's sense. helpful. Yeah. And I am not an SEO expert. So yeah, if you have that, yeah, I mean, this is great. Yeah. We can put some thoughts together and share with Ben for sure. Then. Yeah. And that's something, you know, if he's working with an agency, they should know that as well. But I'm just giving you that just as feedback. Yeah, that's is, good to know. You know, sometimes content that may look cluttered might actually provide a lot of SEO value because Google picks it up and it'll be indexed. So when somebody goes to Google and searches for that term, it pops it up, pops up yeah. readily for them. Yeah. No problem. Uh, the other thing I'll say just in going through everything was it looks like the copyright still showing 2022. So I would make sure that when Ben's doing the website redesign, he brings that up to 2023. And then, you know, the different ones, you know, work, as expected. So collaboration tools, everything looked up to date there. No issues with any of the links or any of the content. Uh, contribute to coding, same thing. That looked great. Uh, everything worked as expected. Under the academic collaboration, a couple of things that were picked up were one is that the translation link, David, is you know your content. And that's back from 2019 again, but I'm assuming that hasn't changed and that's still valid content for today. And then there was a link under academic collaboration with the learning materials working group. And we know that that page has now been archived. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of maybe a little bit stale content, but if somebody wants that materials for academic collaboration, they're still out there. No, that's helpful. And this just goes to show that we haven't really taken a close look at this content for a while now. So this is good that we're doing the review. Yeah. And, and you know, some of that content, David, it may not need to be touched, you know, in four or five years just because it hasn't changed. It's like sure. if the code of conduct is the same or the translation. Sure. Some of it's is long the same, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Under the uh, find a meetup, that was fine. That basically just links you off to meetup.com on the map page. And it has a very nice map that renders all the Hyperledger meetup groups, which there's a tremendous amount of those, David, which is nice. And, uh, you know, gives people an understanding that it's a worldwide organization. Uh, under the regional communities, you know, a lot of these were updated, some of them were very recently updated, like in March of 2023. And it looked like the one that hadn't been touched recently was the Italian chapter, which that looked like it hadn't been touched since 2021. So that may be something to take a look at. You know, most of them were 2022 or 2023 when they were revisited. Yeah, that one has been inactive. Yeah, we were, yeah. We may want to delist it at some point. Yeah, but those those were nice and it and I like the international flavor of that and it looked like it was, you know, yet another good way to promote Hyperledger as a worldwide organization. Uh, the speakers bureau that looks very nicely designed and uh, really had good content for all the speakers in the speakers bureau. And the question I would have for you, David, and maybe Tracy is. Are all those speakers still active in the Hyperledger community to be a part of that speakers bureau? Does that make sense? Yeah, we can ask Emily. Emily, I don't know if you've met Emily Fisher before. She's the one who runs I have. The, yeah, she yeah. runs the speakers bureaus. I, I, my understanding is I think she does keep it up to date, but I, I don't want to assume. We, we can ask her. Okay, yeah, no, no problem. I'm just saying, you know, there's People in there that I know have been in the Hyperledger community for many, many years. And I just didn't know if, you know, some of them are still as active in the community now as they were, or if there's new people that should be added to the list. But, you know, if Emily's got it, that's perfect for keeping it up to date. Yeah, I mean, I see Chris Paris is in that list and I know Chris is retired. Um, so yeah. I don't know if he's still talking about uh, Hyperledger at, um, different sorts of events or whatnot. So um, would probably be worthwhile to just go through the list and make sure that uh, even maybe sending a message out to some of these folks. Um, you know, Mar Mara's in the list. 
um, here. So yeah, I guess just looking at it, definitely see the same thing that you do, John, that there's potentially some people here that maybe don't um, or aren't still involved. Yeah, no problem, Tracy. And you know, it's a super list and really great people. Uh, I just didn't know if they wanted to, like you say, Chris Ferris is a wonderful speaker, but he may not, you know, be active from looking to speak around Hyperledger today. So there you go. Uh, join a community. All the links were up to date. Everything works as expected. And also with the labs, uh, all the links were up to date and worked as expected as well. So that's just kind of an overview of that one tab on the uh, Hyperledger website right there. But I think next week after Peter gets a chance to go through the rest of it, you know, the learn and uh, use tabs, then uh, we should have another great run through. And then, you know, I'm glad to talk to Ben about, you know, some thoughts around the website redesign. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thanks. And sorry, did you drop that link on Discord? Or the uh, I, will, chat? I will drop a share link into the uh, chat. So here we go. Let's just uh, share it. And I'll put it on the wiki page so it's there with the. Right. Yeah, thanks, uh, Bobby. I appreciate your wonderful help as always. And I apologize. I'm going to have to drop in a minute. But yeah, thanks. This is helpful, John. Thank you. Anyone with the link? Here we go. Copy the link. Link copied. Done. And then uh, put it in the chat. There we go. Okay, so that pretty much covers it. I just want to uh, reach out to Niku. Niku, thanks for joining the call today. And also, I really appreciate your wonderful help on joining as part of the mentorship program for onboarding. Anything you want to mention on the onboarding side, Niku? No, nothing more. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, as always, thanks for joining the group today. Anything specific you want to mention or anything that you'd like to do to collaborate with either of the two mentorship programs? Nothing from me. Uh... It's just, you know, my usual apology that I'm being late with everything, but I'll, I'll get on it. And I also have to drop uh, at half an hour. Same bit, Steve. Yeah, Sorry about no problem, Peter. I think we covered the main things, and I appreciate your awesome help on uh, going through this stuff. And don't hesitate to reach out to me on email if you need me to jump in and work with you on something. I just want to make sure that we really, you know, keep pushing forward here and get this, you know, task force on the right path. Yeah. Um just following up on a question I had a few weeks ago. So in the mentee, if a mentee wants to make sure that they are um, not wasting their time, is there an algorithm that they can see where they would know exactly what criteria would actually give them a pass mm -hmm. so that they can uh, you know, know for sure that they're going to get the mentorship if they apply so they don't waste their time, they don't meet their criteria? I guess I'd let, uh, is Peter still on or not? Peter maybe can address that or maybe Tracy can just address that. I don't think there's necessarily an algorithm. I think it's almost a, you know, what resources are a good fit for what mentorships get approved? Does that make sense, Elizabeth? So I'd almost look at and say, these are the ones that's been picked by the Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee. And then look at, and I'm assuming you're talking about yourself, looking at your skill set and based on the skills that are outlined in the proposals that are approved, then I would just apply toward the ones that look like they would be a best fit for your skills. See, best fit. I'm working on a project where it's very transparent. If you have all of these uh, criteria and you can prove them and we'll go ahead and post it on blockchain, you're, you're credentials to make sure that, that you know you've actually provided us everything proves that you qualify then you definitely get the mentorship that's you get it you get the stipend period there's an unlimited amount of funding uh, for everybody who can 
get the, you know, otherwise it's a competitive process and then people end up wasting their time and, and wasting energy. Uh, well, unfortunately in Hyperledger, we don't have unlimited uh, sort of funds for mentorships. So they are limited to one person per mentorship, which means that uh, the person who is running that mentorship project is responsible for choosing the person that they think is the best fit. Well, there's a, there you go. We have a project. How can we make sure that you know, that, that nobody's wasting their time or energy? What would be the best fit? So in other words, if you have already posted all of the people who, you know, okay, just first come first serve. Okay, well, one person meets our requirements so nobody else need apply. That would save a lot of energy. Like I said, it's up to each, it's up to each individual mentor as to how they decide who they want to work with. So it's, it's their carbon. Uh, okay. So, so that's their carbon debt if they decide that they want to make it a competitive process instead of a collaborative. It's not, it's so, okay. Thank you. That answers my question. Okay, great. Uh, Bobby, you have anything else that we should cover at this time or you think we're good to call it a wrap for today's call? No, we're good. I put on the onboarding page under uh, where it said you would do the participate part, your link, and then we'll wait for next week for Peter's link or Peter's uh, conversation. And then the document stuff, um, I'm just going to keep trying to further define um, pathways, journeys. I'm not really sure um, uh, if anybody has any ideas to, to jumpstart this uh, so that we have the right uh, documentation templates and standards where they need to be for the right people to use them. Okay, that's it for me. Okay, Bobby, and please reach out to me via email if you want me to collaborate with you on any of those flow diagrams or any, uh, you know, learning materials, documentation items that you're working on right now. I sure will. Okay, everyone. Well, I know time is valuable, so I'm going to give you back a half an hour here. And I hope everyone has a great week. And if you need anything, reach out to us via email or on Discord. Thank you. Have a great one.